This short video on the subject matter of right to travel is not intended for anyone to commit any unlawful acts. However, it is for the purpose of study. MA720 Study Guide Booklet for Moors. Let's go over the subject matter of right to travel. get to that later oh, maybe this one too ah there it is house bill 7 by representative Bobby Franklin Bobby Franklin Georgia and he defends house bill 7 okay so we should say that this guy is pretty competent when it comes to the subject matter of right to travel to amend Title 40 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to motor vehicles and traffic so as to repeal Chapter 5 relating to driver licenses, driver licenses, provided for a short title to report the findings of the General Assembly regarding the constitutionality of certain laws relating to driver licenses to provide for an effective date to repeal the conflicting laws and for other purposes, be it enacted by the General Assembly of Georgia, Section 1. This act shall be known and may be cited as the Right to Travel Act. Section 2. The General Assembly finds that, subsection 1, free people, free people, free people have a common law and constitutional right to travel on the roads and highways that are provided by their government for that purpose. Chicago Motor Coach versus Chicago, Gare versus Chicago. Boone versus Clark. The use of the highways for the purpose of travel and transportation is not a mere privilege, but a common and fundamental right, which the public and natural people cannot be deprived. Licensing of drivers cannot be required of free people. Again, free people. One more time, free people, because taking on the restrictions of a license requires the surrender of an inalienable right. The definition of inalienable. This word is applied to those things, the property of which cannot be lawfully transferred from one person to another. Public highways and rivers are of this kind. There are also many rights which are inalienable as the rights of liberty or of speech. The definition of unalienable. The state of a thing or right which cannot be sold. Things which are not in commerce, as public roads, are in their nature unalienable. Some things are unalienable in consequence of particular provisions in the law forbidding their sale or transfer, as pensions granted by the government. The natural rights of life and liberty are unalienable. Now we find that interesting. Surrendering an inalienable right just because of getting a license. Check this out. In regards to what we just read. Therefore, a state cannot impose restrictions on the acceptance of a license that will deprive the licensee of his constitutional rights. Ruckenbrod versus Mullins. Bobby Franklin. He said, free people. Anytime you hear government officials saying free people, obviously there must be some people that are not free, right? So let's keep that in mind in regards to this subject matter and what we're going over, okay? Now, this is not the only public official that brought up free people. Let's go to Senator Wayne Stump. Senator Wayne Stump. 1985, he writes to Ralph Milstead, Director, Department of Public Safety, State of Arizona. Dear Director Milstead, listen to the terminology of how he uses these terms, okay? It has come to my attention that numerous individuals in our state have rescinded all of their contracts with the United States federal government, the state of Arizona, and each of its political subdivisions establishing themselves as free men. 
under the organic national constitution of the Republic of the United States of America. Consequently, they may be driving without auto registration, driver licenses, or any other evidence of contract. Now you see how he says free men establishing themselves as free men under what? Under the organic national constitution of the Republic. The United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion and on application of the legislature or of the executive when the legislature cannot be convened against domestic violence. Mulger versus Kansas. Under the United States Republic's constitutional system or government and upon the individuality and intelligence of the citizen, the state does not claim to control one's conduct due to others leaving one the sole judge as to all that affects oneself. Of the United States of America, see that it says organic national constitution. Marbury versus Madison. The constitution of these United States is the supreme law of the land. And any law that is repugnant to the constitution is null and void of law. And how he says of the Republic and of the United States of America. Keep that in mind, people. Okay. Because. Many law enforcement personnel may be unaware of the contractual nature of auto registration and driver licenses in regards to what we just read. Bonnecke versus Massachusetts. A writing is void ab initio in the case of fraud in the inception, and it need not be formally rescinded as a prerequisite to right of avoidance. Therefore, a state cannot impose restrictions on the acceptance of a license that will deprive the licensee of his constitutional rights, Ruckenbrod versus Mullins. It is conceivable that this situation may lead to confrontation between these individuals and law enforcement personnel. Sap versus Tallahassee. It is not the duty of the police to protect you. Their job is to protect the corporation and arrest cold breakers. Rodney Dale, class versus North Carolina Department of Transportation. Police department is not an agency of the state. I urge you to inform yourself and your personnel about this matter as soon as possible. If you would like to be briefed by someone knowledgeable on this subject, please contact me. In the meantime, inasmuch as this procedure is entirely appropriate when properly carried out, I would like to be personally notified of every such instance of confrontation in order that the persons involved and the public officials involved may be apprised of the correct procedure and the appropriateness of their actions on the part of each concerned. My office phone is 255-5261 and I am requesting to be notified of the names and incidents along with the addresses and phone numbers of participants of any such confrontation arising from the exercise of a person's free man status miller versus kansas the claim and exercise of a constitutional right cannot be converted into a crime in order to evaluate the outcome of properly rescinded contracts so here he's kind of giving context to what you what you can do rescind contracts and not that you should do any of this without actually mastering the subject matter. And I don't mean just being a scholar of the subject matter. Definitely do not do any of this if you are a beginner in studying this subject matter. There's a beginner, which is a neophyte, a beginner, a scholar, and a master. If you're not a master of this subject matter, please do not exercise this right because it will cause you more trouble than it is actually worth had you just studied and became a master of the subject matter, you will know all the ins and outs, what you should do and what you should not do. Now back to the Right to Travel Act. House Bill 7, Bobby Franklin, right? Bobby Franklin. And we'll get to that too. Now, section two, right? Subsection three. This is an interesting part of this video. And why is because numerous individuals actually have the belief that a lot of the Supreme Court cases that we happen to cite have nothing to do with actually 
protecting and preserving your inalienable right to travel on public roadways and highways in an automobile without a driver license or registration. As if the state can make it illegal for you to own a car without owning it in association with them. So, because numerous individuals trolling and really don't understand how case law is used, will say that the case laws that we cited in the Supreme Court case videos that you should know, that we put on to our channel, Morris America 720, that those cases are outdated. They have nothing to do with the right to travel. Ziegler versus Railroad. If any question of fact or liability be conclusively presumed against him, this is not due process of law. Let's get some context of what we're talking about. So, Right to Travel Act, Section 2, Subsection 3, where rights secured by the Constitution of the United States and the state of Georgia are involved because when public officials take their oath, they take their oath to uphold the United States Constitution and the state's Constitution as well. So, I'll just double back. Where rights secured by the Constitution of the United States and the state of Georgia are involved, there can be no rulemaking or legislation that would abrogate these rights. Where does that come from? Hmm. Since these Supreme Court cases have nothing to do with protecting your right to travel, a competent public official on the subject matter, why would he cite these cases? So, look familiar? Miranda versus Arizona. Where rights secured by the Constitution are involved, there can be no rulemaking or legislation which will abrogate them. Hmm. Right? Back to the Right to Travel Act. It's so convenient having this all together. So convenient. Wouldn't go to court without it. Okay. So next sentence. The very next sentence, people. The claim and exercise of a constitutional right cannot be converted into a crime. Oh, what case law does that come from? Did he have to cite that as case law? Did he even cite it as case law? No. He didn't cite it as case law. You know, it's how case law is used. Where are the trolls at? Miller versus Kansas. The claim and exercise of constitutional rights cannot be converted into a crime. Right? Okay. Back to the Right to Travel Act. Now we read... The first sentence, the second sentence, here's a third sentence. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed upon an individual because of this exercise of constitutional rights. Hmm. Back to the Supreme Court case list that we put up on the YouTube channel, Morris American 720. And we put these things together for the purpose of study. Okay? Not so that you throw away your license, your registration, and go out and get yourself arrested because you don't comprehend the subject matter. Okay? Can't say that enough. Now, where's that case come from? Sure versus color. For a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. Corpus selecti. Corpus selecti is Latin for injured party. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed on one because of this constitutional right. Hmm. Okay, back to the Right to Travel Act. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed upon an individual because of this exercise of constitutional rights. Just so it's clear. Right to Travel Act, Section 2. Let's go to right under this case law. We'll come back to that. Subsection 6. This should sound very familiar to you all that do study the subject matter. The right to travel upon the public highways is not a mere privilege which may be permitted or prohibited at will, but the common right which every citizen has 
under his or her right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, sounds very familiar. Back to the case law. Thompson versus Smith. The right of a citizen to travel upon the public highways and to transport one's property thereon, either by carriage or automobile, is not a mere privilege which a city may prohibit or permit at will, but a common right which he or she has under the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So, back to the Right to Travel Act. Right to Travel Act, Section 2, Subsection 6, Second Sentence. Under this constitutional guarantee, one may therefore, under normal conditions, travel at his or her inclination along the public highways or in public places while conducting himself or herself in an orderly and decent manner. Christie versus Elliot. Traveling in an automobile on the public roads was not a threat to the public safety or health and constituted no hazard to the public, and such a traveler owed no other duty to the public, example, the state. He or she and his and her auto having equal right to and on the roadways and highways as horses and wagons, ETC. This same right is still substantive rule in that speeding, running stop signs, traveling without license plates or registration are not threats to the public safety and thus are not arrestable offenses. So let's go to the second page of this same document. Okay. Section two, subsection four. American citizens have the inalienable right to use the roads and highways unrestricted in any manner so long as they are not damaging or violating property or rights of others. Michigan versus Duke. State police power extends only to immediate threats to public safety, health, welfare, ETC, which driving and speeding are not. State versus Armstead. The right to travel, the right to mode of conveyance, the right to locomotion are all absolute rights, and the police cannot make void the exercise of rights. California versus Farley. Speeding, driving without a license, wrong plates or no plates, no registration, no tags, ETC, have been held to be non-arrestable offenses. People versus battle. Traffic infractions are not a crime. U.S. versus Bishop. If you have relied on prior decisions of the Supreme Court, you have the perfect defense for willfulness. The government by requiring the people to obtain driver licenses is restricting and therefore violating the people's common law and constitutional right to travel. Hmm. Kent versus Doles. The right to park or travel is part of a liberty of which the natural person, citizen, cannot be deprived without due process of law under the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. Okay, back to the Right to Travel Act. Okay, House Bill 7, Section 2. Subsection 7. Thus, the legislature does not have the power to abrogate the citizen's right to travel upon public roads by passing legislation, forcing the citizens to waive the right and convert that right into a privilege. Sounds familiar. U.S. versus Minker. Because of what appears to be a lawful command on the surface, many citizens, because of their respect for what only appears to be a law, are cunningly coerced into waiving their rights due to ignorance. Sounds very familiar. Back to the Supreme Court case laws. Ah, there it is. Murdoch versus Penn. No state shall convert a liberty into a privilege, license it, and attach a fee to it. Sounds familiar, right?
Back to the Right to Travel Act. Subsection 7. Thus, the legislature does not have the power to abrogate the citizens' right to travel upon the public roads by passing legislation forcing the citizen to waive the right. Brady versus U.S. Waivers of constitutional rights, not only must they be voluntary, they must be knowingly intelligent acts done with sufficient awareness and convert that right into a privilege. Sounds like Murdoch versus Penn to us. Murdoch versus Pennsylvania. No state shall convert a liberty into a privilege, license it, and attach a fee to it. Shuttlesworth versus Birmingham. If the state converts a liberty into a privilege, the citizen can engage in the right with impunity. Now, we can get to Right to Travel Act, Section 2, Subsection 5. In Shapiro versus Thompson, 1969, Justice Potter Stewart noted in a concurring opinion that the right to travel is a right broadly assertable against private interference as well as governmental action. Like the right of association, it is a virtually unconditional personal right guaranteed by the Constitution to us all. As a side note, we're just going to go to Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Okay? All right. Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 1948. Article 17. Everyone has the right to own property alone as well as in association with others. Maybe you don't want to own your automobile in association with others. Maybe you don't. No one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his property. Section 2. Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Right? Mm -hmm. 1948. Everybody says they study. Now let's go down to 20. Everyone has the right to freedom of peaceful assembly and association. No one may be compelled to belong to an association. Mm -hmm. so check this out, check this out. No one shall be held in slavery or servitude. Slavery and the slave trade shall be prohibited in all their forms. Now say I don't want to be a member of the Department of Motor Vehicles. Should we believe that I can only own my private automobile and use it on my private property? As if, at minimum, the people do not have a easement to public roads and highways? Public roads and highways. Hmm. Look up easements, people. In the definition of highway, it states an easement. So this is the definition of private or public easement. A private easement is one in which the enjoyment is restricted to one or a few individuals, while a public easement is one the right to the enjoyment of which is vested in the public generally or in an entire community, such as an easement of passage on the public streets and highways or of navigation on a stream. However, check the state's constitution in regards to property. Okay? Now back to the Right to Travel Act. The Articles of Confederation had an explicit right to travel, and we hold that the right to travel is so fundamental that the framers thought it was unnecessary to include it in the Constitution or the Bill of Rights. Remembering that this Right to Travel Act by Representative Bobby Franklin. Bobby Franklin. Let's see what you have to say. CBSAtlanta.com Atlanta. A state lawmaker from Marietta is sponsoring a bill that seeks to do away with Georgia driver licenses. State Representative Bobby Franklin has filed House Bill 7, calling it the Right to Travel Act. In his bill, Franklin states free people have a common law and constitutional right to travel on the public roads and highways that are provided by their government for that purpose. Licensing of drivers cannot be required of free people because taking on the restrictions of a license requires the surrender of an inalienable right. 
Franklin told CBS Atlanta News that driver licenses are a throwback to oppressive times. Agents of the state demanding your papers, he said, we're getting that way here. CBS Atlanta's Rebecca Scram asked Franklin, how are we going to keep up with who's who and who's on the roads and who's not supposed to be on the roads? That's a great question, Franklin said. And I would have to answer that with a question. Why do you need to know who's who? What about 12 to 14 year olds who want to drive? What would stop them? Scram asked. Well, what's stopping them now anyway? Franklin answered. But not all drivers are on board with the lawmaker's idea. I think people should be qualified in some way to drive, Susan Cotton said. It's kind of dumb. We need to focus on more important things. The system is working, Sherrier Sakari said. Franklin's name is on the first 21 bills of the legislative session, including one that would require the exclusive use of gold and silver as tender and payment of debt by or to the state as required in the Georgia Constitution. Can the state really pay in gold and silver, Scram asked. Sure, and they can write checks on it, Franklin said. They can use a debit card as long as what's denominated behind it is gold and silver. See Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution. Let's go to the United States Constitution as a side note. Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Republic Constitution. No state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation, grant letters of mark and reprisal, coin money, emit bills of credit, make anything but gold and silver coin, a tender in payment of debts, pass any bill of attainder, ex post facto law, or law impairing the obligation of contracts, or grant any title of nobility. Back to the Right to Travel Act. Right to Travel Act. Back to Bobby Franklin. Franklin is also behind House Bill 11, which would repeal the authority of the governor to issue mandatory vaccination orders. I'm a firm believer that no person should be subjected to an invasive medical procedure without their consent, he said. Have you ever had critics say, look, some of these bills are a waste of paper, Scram asked. Next page. I can't speak for what other people think, Franklin said. I just know I took an oath to uphold the Constitution, and that's what I'm trying to do. Cooper versus Aaron. No state legislator or executive or judicial officer can war against the Constitution without violating his undertaking to support it. You can veil all of the bills submitted so far by state representative Bobby Franklin. Just go to, and then they provide website. It's kind of hard to see. However, all you have to do is just type this in. On Google, put in Right to Travel Act, House Bill 7, or any of the like. Keeping in mind, additional travel slash license case laws. People versus battle. Traffic infractions are not a crime. That's important to remember. That is stated because there are two courts, criminal courts for criminal matters and civil courts for civil matters. 
What does traffic court fall under? Civil court or criminal court? In order for a criminal case, you must have an injured party because you have the right to face your accuser. Question, can the accuser and the witness be the same person only? When you go to traffic court, it says criminal slash traffic court, traffic being commerce, bills of exchange, and the like. However, for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party, corpus electing. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed on one because of this constitutional right. Ziegler versus Railroad. If any question of fact or liability be conclusively presumed against him, this is not due process of law. Bonnecke versus Massachusetts. A writing is void ab initio in the case of fraud in the inception and it need not be formally rescinded as a prerequisite to right of avoidance. Keeping in mind what we read earlier. Ruckenbrod versus Mullins. A state cannot impose restrictions on the acceptance of a license that will deprive the licensee of his constitutional rights. Now keeping that in mind, read this case, Shulman versus Kaiser. Shulman versus Kaiser, agency, or party sitting for the agency, which would be the magistrate of a municipal court, has no authority to enforce as to any licensee unless he is acting for compensation. Such an act is highly penal in nature and should not be construed to include anything which is not embraced within its terms. Where there is no charge within a complaint that the accused was employed, for compensation to do the act complained of or that the act constituted part of a contract. Interesting, right? Doolin versus Carr. An action by the Department of Motor Vehicles, whether directly or through a court sitting administratively as the hearing officer, must be clearly defined in the statute before it has subject matter jurisdiction. Without such jurisdiction of the licensee, all acts of the agency by its employees, agents, hearing officers are null and void. Now a question. Are the statutes, codes, and regulations, are those the law of the land? Well, let's go to some of the Supreme Court case law. Ah. Uh. Marbury versus Madison. The Constitution of these United States is the supreme law of the land, and any law that is repugnant to the Constitution is none of what a law. However, back to the United States Constitution. Article 6, Clause 2. This Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land. Hmm. So all treaties shall be supreme law of the land and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the constitution or laws of any state to the contrary, notwithstanding. Let's go over that again. Anything in the constitution or laws of any state to the contrary, notwithstanding. So you can understand why Representative Bobby Franklin, Senator Wayne Stump, these public officials are bringing up these subject matters and making them known publicly to the people. If you are interested in more videos like this, please add a comment in the comment section of this video, YouTube channel, Morish American 720. If you are interested in the information that is put together inside this MA720 study guide booklet for Morris, please email morrisamerican720 at gmail.com. Peace.